dropped in on your uh, police commissioner. Oh, please don't call him mine. He's an interesting man, shrewd, a little cagey, maybe. Astute assessment. Did he give you any information you can use? Well, he assured me that the investigation into my father's death would be given highest priority. Nothing would be swept under the carpet. Should I believe him? What do you think? Well, I mean, of course, I'd like to. You see, I have this problem giving out trust before it's been earned, especially when it comes to the PCPD. I understand. Well, I'm uh, hardly objective when it comes to the police commissioner. I don't trust him. And as far as I'm concerned, a cop's a cop. But you should know that he wasn't always the picture of respectability. Now, everybody around here is going to tell you that he's changed. Call me a cynic. I have trouble with that concept. Understood. Justice, while we're on the subject of your father, I had an opportunity to uh, observe a few of his old adversaries. Well, I take it he assembled an impressive list of enemies. Luke Spencer, yeah. I specifically ask you not to poke around in the past. I thought I could trust you. Uh, look, Mary May, I just happened to find myself in a poker game with some heavy wallets, and Bradley's name came up. And who would those heavy wallets be? Edward Quartermain, Lee Baldwin, Jack Boland. You know them? The names are familiar, of course. Well, how are they connected to my father? Well, I don't know that they are, Justice. But when Dr. Hardy mentioned that your father's body had been found, these three clammed up like they got an instant case of lockjaw. Do they say anything? No, but the looks that went around that room spoke volumes. I want you to stop this. Now, this is ridiculous. Reading something sinister into the way people look at one another. And your speculation isn't going to change anything that happened. It's not going to bring my son back. Now listen, the body has been found. We're going to have a service. And Bradley will finally, finally rest in peace. And I'm asking you again, please, respect my wishes and let it be, Luke. I didn't handle that very well. Oh, uh, no one could. My grandmother has spent years refusing to confront the events surrounding my father's disappearance. I've never completely understood why. You know, it's just not like her to keep her head in the sand. Even now, you've been found, all the evidence points to murder, and still she just, it's like she just wants it to go away. It ain't gonna go away. No, it ain't. I won't let it. He was my father, and I want to know how and why he died. So, why don't you give me the lowdown on these jokers, and then you and I can figure out where to go from there. Well, old Ed Quartermain and his friends pretty much run for chuckles. It's old money? Mm-hmm. Edward inherited some, but he made his fortune in pharmaceuticals. Over the last 30 years, he's pretty much built an empire here, second to none. He's got his hands in every pie I know of. And Jack Boland? Jack Boland's a real estate developer, the biggest one around. He and old Eddie are cutthroat bosom buddies. Uh, competitive, but friends. Lee Baldwin is a corporate attorney. Of course, he handles the account for ELQ. That's the quarter main company. Lee was the mayor of Port Charles once, but don't let that step on you. <laughs> so was I. Don't give anybody that office. The thing about Lee is uh, he's deceptive. He knows enough, I'm sure, about every so-called law-abiding citizen in town to put us all away. Hmm. Sounds like an awful lot of power sitting around one table. Yeah, and a lot to be aligned against one man. Now, given what your father stood for and fought against, I'm sure he was in their faces. And this crowd can play dirty. Okay. 
So how would I go about making my own assessment of these guys? Do you play poker? Shaking. What happened? My hand, see? I'm still angry. All these years later, it's still there, just underneath the surface. I know. Do you? You even have to ask? He was my son. But you're willing to just let it go? You show me a point of holding on to rage. It won't bring Bradley back. And it'll just eat your life away. Not if it's used properly, Granny May. What do you think motivated my father to fight the battles that he did? Primal rage at the conditions that we were expected to accept as a people and an unyielding resolve not to do so anymore. What do you think built this house? My rage about what happened to my son, about the hopelessness I see in the eyes of the children in this neighborhood. I took my anger and I channeled it into something positive and something constructive. And I'm telling you, baby, if you're not able to do the same, I'm about ready to get real frightened for you. I'm so 